Once you have cleaned the cow's teat, then it's time to take the milk samples. Remove the tube cap, but do not set it down or touch the inside of the tube or cap. Hold the tube at a 45 degree angle to reduce the chance of contamination while collecting the sample. Collect three to five milliliters of milk from the infected quarter of the cow in the properly labeled tube. Don't touch the tube lip with your fingers or the teat end. Recap the tube tightly. Repeat this step as needed with new labeled tubes if other quarters are infected in the same cow. Next, use your Sharpie marker to label the plate bottom with the cow's ID number, which quarter is being sampled, and the date you are taking the sample. Be sure to wear gloves while handling all the culture supplies. You should take every precaution to eliminate contamination for the best results. After this, dip a sterile swab into the milk tube and use the swab to make a zigzag mark on the first quadrant of the plate. Do not lay the swab down after opening it and don't reuse it. Repeat that process for each quadrant, making sure to use a new swab for each quadrant and zigzag. After that, cover the plate and place it in the auger facing down in the incubator for 24 hours at 95 degrees Fahrenheit. After 24 hours, you can read the results. Once your plates and samples have been incubated, the next step will be to read and record your results. You'll read the plates and record the bacterial growth results on the provided forms. You'll evaluate quads 1 through 3 in turn to determine if and which bacteria are present in each one. Then you'll look at quad 4, the control auger, to confirm and further differentiate results from the other three. It's critical to carefully read the plates and growths and write down the results accurately. This is the identification sheet where you record the results from each quad. This is the treatment sheet. The treatment for a cow with mastitis will be determined by which bacteria have been identified. In the first quadrant, MAC, you will test for several types of gram-negative bacteria. Step 1 is to determine if there is any bacterial growth. If there is no growth in quad 1, then you do not have any gram-negative bacteria and you should then check the other quads for growth. If there is growth, then you need to evaluate the color of the growth so as to determine whether it is coliform or non-coliform. So, in step two, you'll determine what kind it is based on the color of the growth in the quad. Are the colonies pink or off-white? If the color is bright pink, these types of colonies indicate a coliform type of bacteria. If the color is off-white or yellow, this would indicate a non-coliform type of bacteria, which would be either Serratia, Pseudomonas, or Proteus. Step 4 will be to record on the identification sheet whether the colonies are coliform or non-coliform. Also in Step 4, on a different sheet called the Treatment Sheet, you'll record the cow ID number, bacteria type, and treatment method. The second quadrant will determine whether or not the bacteria are streptococci. Again, step one is to determine if there is any bacterial growth. If there is no bacterial growth, you do not have any streptococci bacteria, and you can proceed to check the other quads. If there is growth, then you'll proceed to step two, which is to determine whether the colonies are esculin positive or esculin negative. You will notice that colonies in this quadrant may demonstrate what is known as hemolysis. Hemolysis is when the bacteria breaks down the agar around the bacteria colony and causes what looks like a clear ring or zone around it. If you see black colonies with no zone of clearing or no hemolysis, that indicates esculin positive, strep uberus. Black colonies with hemolysis a zone of clearing around them indicate esculin negative, strep agalactia, or strep dysgalactia. Step three is to record on the identification sheet whether the colonies for quad two are esculin negative 
or esculin positive. For step four, you'll record the colonies as strep uberus on treatment sheet unless you found esculin negative colonies. If you found esculin negative colonies, you'll have to use the blood auger to help you determine bacterial species. If it's E positive colonies, no hemolysis, then write strep uberus on treatment sheet. If it's E neg colonies present, have hemolysis, then use quad 4 to determine bacterial species. Will be strep dyscalactia or strep agalactia. The third quadrant on the quad plates will indicate growth if the bacteria are staphylococcal. Again, step one is to determine if there is any bacterial growth. If there is no bacterial growth, you need to check your other quads. You do not have any staphylococci bacteria. If there is growth in this quadrant, then you need to proceed to step two, which is to then determine whether the colonies are black with no clear zone or hemolysis, or black with a clear zone, hemolysis. Black colonies with no hemolysis are coagulase negative staphylococci or CNS. Black colonies with hemolysis are staph aureus suspect colonies. Step three is to record on the identification sheet whether the colonies are CNS or staph aureus suspect. For step four, if staph aureus suspect are present, you'll have to use the blood auger quad to determine bacterial species. Otherwise, record on the treatment sheet as CNS. The fourth and final quad is the blood auger quad, which confirms the results from the other three quads. If you saw gram-negative growth on gram-negative quad 1, you should also see growth on blood quad quad 4. The coliform and non-coliform bacteria grow differently, and you will be able to differentiate between the two non-coliform species as well. If you saw esculin-negative colony growth on streptococci quad 2, you should also see growth on blood quad quad 4. Hemolysis around small gray off-white colonies indicate strep agalactia suspect. No hemolysis around small gray off-white colonies indicates strep dyscalactia or strep uberus. If you saw colony growth on staphylococci quad 3, you should also see growth on blood quad quad 4. Hemolysis around larger white, cream, yellow colonies indicate staph aureus suspect. No hemolysis around larger white cream yellow colonies indicates staph SPP or CNS. In part four, you will make your final decisions about which bacteria you have and you'll then record that information on the treatment sheet. Once you have completed analyzing the quad plates and recording your results, it's time to clean up. Since you're working with biological waste, you'll need to flood each plate with bleach and seal the quad plates in Ziploc bags before disposing of them in the trash. For follow-up and treatment, you should consult with your herd manager and veterinarian in order to set up treatment protocol based on your culture results. Mastitis is common and its treatment can be costly. The many different types of bacteria and their individual treatment courses can complicate treatment. In order to minimize misdiagnosing bacteria and subsequently misusing antibiotics, the on-farm culturing presentation you just finished has provided you with the proper information you can use to accurately determine which bacteria is or is not present in the milk of your dairy herd.